Dr. Bishop. Can I help you? My name's Peter Knox. I've enjoyed playing him enormously because he's a complex, flawed character. Your mother and I met when we were teenagers. We feel rather hard done by his witches, persecuted by vampires throughout history. He's deeply cynical, feels that they can never truly live together. And there's a belief that he firmly holds that witches brought about vampires through their own spells. Because I requested Ashmore 782 this morning, and it isn't there. There may be the possibility of bringing about the demise of vampires, if the book of life can be found. It could be that there's a spell on it, and that somehow, for some reason, you broke it. I'm not my mother, Mr. Knox. I didn't inherit her powers. Diana is extremely powerful, but she's reluctant. She doesn't really want these gifts. I'm not going to call it up for you. Why not? Because I don't happen to like the idea of uncreating other species. They would do exactly the same to us. Sometimes it does lapse into a revengeful phase with Peter Knox, but a lot of the times it is defending the rights as he sees it of his people. In the congregation, there is a, a political assembly where the, the witches, demons, vampires meet, and he's a very big force on that council. He'd rather kill than be killed. Peter Knox is one of the finest at being able to invoke the power of chant and spell from ancient ritual. And he's a master in getting into other people's minds. He has the power of possessing another person's thoughts. Whereas Satu really can move heaven and earth. And Peter Knox is putting pressure on her to use these talents to pave the way for witches to have the upper hand. Through Peter Knox, we're able to reveal obsession in a goal is going to make you intolerant, that we fear the unknown, that we blame, judge, instead of trying to accept and understand 